Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. Uh, we have from live studio in the Daman Mall brought to you by the STEM for All Makerspace and also IPC Systems in Rembrandt. And uh, I am Natalia Shamswa from Multimedia University, will be your host today for this live webinar of scope and career in telecommunications. And what we intend to do today is to inspire female students into the STEM career. So without further ado, let me just introduce the distinguished speakers we have today. So with us today, we have Dr. Siti Azlida from Multimedia University specifically from the Faculty of Engineering. We have two very special people from IPC Systems uh, who is the Regional Director for Advanced Support Group, Mr. Chi Tan Shah, and also Ms. Nuru Jaiza who is the Technical Support Engineer in the uh, IPC Systems. So uh, perhaps we can say hi to the speakers. So yeah, we have Dr. Azlida. All of them are basically remote from their um, houses and office. Uh, and I am here in STEM for All Makerspace Studio live, bringing you this session. Hopefully we have this session uh, from here and for about 45 minutes where we're going to cover all the cool stuff about uh, telecommunications and engineering. So, uh, all right, uh, now without further ado, let me just introduce Dr. Siti Azlida. Dr. Siti Azlida is a um, senior lecturer from the Faculty of Engineering in Multimedia University, and she has done a lot of cool stuff. And what she intends to do today is to share with you all these students out there, especially female students, that engineering, specifically telecommunications engineering, is not just meant for the boys. It's actually a cool thing that female can also do and um, how it is not really stereotyped towards just only males can do that, you know. So girls out there, if you are interested in what is going to be emerging in the next um, few couple of years, which what you will see in terms of telecommunications, for example, 5G, Dr. Azlida's presentation will share with you what would be in store and how girls like you and me kind of thing can also be the next telecommunications engineer. So without further ado, Dr. Azlidar, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Is it clear? Yes, we can hear you. All yes. right, uh, let, let me share my uh, screen. Can you see my uh, slide? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Firstly, uh, thank you, uh, Miss Natalia, for the uh, introduction. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone, uh, especially those uh, school students, uh, young generation. Uh, I think uh, nowadays, uh, those uh, most of you. Uh, are more advanced than as I mean, know uh, and, and use many uh, telecommunication technologies uh, for, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if ladies also play games. I think there are, <laughs> you, you play games every day, you watch movies every day, so everything is uh, connected. And uh, yeah, telecommunication industry is very uh, fast moving industry. So there are many things to talk about. So I'm, I'm, I feel very excited to share with all of you on uh, this uh, topic. Uh, before that, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to share with uh, our students today on this topic, and especially for girls, uh, what, I mean, in what uh, area or job scope uh, girls can get involved. Uh, when, when people are talking about uh, engineering, when first people ask me, um, what do you teach in uh, MMU? I said, uh, I teach uh, engineering subject. So that the first impression said, wow, engineering, uh, is it difficult? So uh, the, the first impression is that engineering is a difficult course and uh, a challenging course. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, something that uh, people 
it's a view. I mean, uh, what people think it is, but actually, uh, it is something very interesting to learn, very exciting uh, uh, scope or uh, area of uh, study or area of uh, job that you can get involved with. So, um, so we, we as uh, uh, girls or ladies or women uh, should not uh, think that it's, it is something that is very difficult for us to get involved in, in, in this industry. When I first uh, choose to uh, choose this course, uh, telecommunication engineering, uh, I was excited to learn about how waves can propagate something that you cannot see, uh, that can transmit signals from one place to another uh, very fast. So uh, there is something that uh, I was inspired when I was uh, when I choose to get, I mean, to obtain or to to go. Uh, through this uh, uh, telecommunication uh, engineering uh, course. So uh, there are many things that I want to share. Hopefully, I will not deviate from the topic. Uh, so the first thing that you uh, might come into your mind, I'm not sure uh, uh, school students uh, nowadays, when we talk about telecommunication, maybe uh, when, when we say telecommunication, maybe most of you can see uh, antennas, this, this uh, very big antennas. Uh, on top of the buildings, uh, near your uh, certain, uh, on top of mountains, you can see many antennas up nowadays that transmit signal wirelessly, and and uh, we can see that the telecommunication industry evolved very fast. So it is a very fast changing industry. It started the first wireless phone. Okay, we if we recall the first wireless phone is in 1980s. And now we are already in 2020s, and uh, 5G is here already. I mean, uh, the 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 change in telecommunication industry uh, very is happening very fast. So, uh, in fact, you, when you buy your phone, uh, those uh, nowadays is already 4G phone, and 5G is there in 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 South Korea. You can see, you can Google and in YouTube. Uh, in South Korea, 5G is already there. People are using 5G telephones. And what 5G can uh, offer to all of us are very exciting things that we uh, previously we, we don't think is, is uh, possible. But now, with 5G, there are many uh, things which is not possible uh, in, the, in the previous years. Now, it can be uh, happening today, right? So if you look at the telecommunication uh, evolution from 1980s, where you have a very big telephone, and now uh, we are using, most of us are using a smartphone, 4G smartphone, and in 5G. Uh, sorry, this is just this is not the handphone. Huh? This is uh, one of the equipment or device for virtual reality. Uh, so in 5G, we have a specific. I mean. Uh, a uh, cell a uh, handphone, a smartphone, a 5G uh, hand, a smartphone when you want to use 5G. Uh, so what are the things that we can do in 5G? Uh, there are many things like uh, self-driving cars. Uh, it's only possible if we have 5G because, uh, for example, for a self-driving car, you, you must make, we must make sure that uh, the car can uh, bring us from one point to another location. Uh, safely. So we, the car must have many sensors that can detect uh, in a very fast um, the signal uh, uh, transmitted between the sensor and uh, car, uh, the sensor in the car uh, that can detect if there is any uh, obstruction or anything uh, happen uh, in, in, on the road, they can avoid uh, any collision. Or, so so self-driving car is uh, one of the examples where we need 5G. What does it mean by 5G anyway? Okay, what is 5G? 5G is uh, fifth generation. Okay, G, the, 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 the alphabet G itself is generation. Okay, now we are using a 4G, uh, fourth generation. And in fact, uh, maybe when you uh, uh, go to a certain rural area, you cannot get 4G signal, right? When you cannot get 4G signals, then your your you cannot uh, uh, do video call because the connection is very slow. But 
when we have 5G, the speed is very, very high speed, extremely high speed. It is 10 to 100 times faster than 4G. And uh, example, a simple example is uh, when we download a movie uh, using 5G, you can download a movie in only a few minutes. Okay, the whole the whole movie and the, the speed, we, uh, the speed, the average speed is around 10 gigabit per second. Okay, so and now uh, now what we are using is 4G is around 100 megabit per second. And what what can we do if we have very high speed uh, network like that? So we there are many uh, applications uh, which is not possible before. Can and we can uh, have a application uh, with high speed uh, like a uh, Self-driving car, uh, augmented reality. Uh, do, you, do you know what is augmented reality? I'm not sure. Uh, if uh, all of you know, you can, you can search what is augmented reality. It's something that a uh, technology where you can, uh, if you want to go from one place to another, and uh, you want to know when you you this this picture shows uh, an example of augmented reality where uh, when you walk along the path and you can see where is the location for a restaurant uh, so everything uh, is uh, so everybody can uh, use the application for augmented reality and also virtual reality now uh, i'm not sure if all of you have seen uh, in youtube uh, in south korea when uh, nowadays uh, because they already have 5G, uh, young generation in South Korea can dance with their K-pop star. Uh, I mean, the hologram of K-pop star, they, they can dance. You, you can search in YouTube how this uh, 5G application uh, is used uh, in virtual reality in South Korea, uh, in uh, entertainment. And with 5G, we can have smartphone, uh, smart, smart house, uh, um, smart house, and uh, where uh, all the equipment or device in our house are communicating between each other. Uh, we call it, uh, and this is a part of IoT, Internet of Things. Um, and there are many other applications that we uh, exciting applications uh, in uh, uh, in five. So now uh, many countries have uh, deployed. Uh, this is a statistic in uh, August 2020. Uh, we can see that China, South Korea, uh, Australia, US already uh, launched their privacy network, right? Uh, our country, how about our country? Okay, so in, in Malaysia, uh, recently, uh, last month, okay, uh, 9th February in the Star News, uh, our Prime Minister has announced that uh, we will start to get the privacy connectivity by the end of this year. And that is the uh, planning, the, the predicted uh, date or time where we can start to have this 5G. So hopefully it can be realized. And there are many planning uh, now uh, is in the uh, where our uh, Malaysian Communication and Multimedia Communi uh, Commission (MTMC) uh, is. I mean, our government and industry players are doing. Uh, all the planning and uh, try to make sure that we can get the 5G by end of this year. And when we have 5G, there are many things that we can do. For example, precision farming. What does it mean by precision farming? Okay, precision farming is uh, where we can use uh, certain applications uh, to increase the production of our uh, farm or yield, uh, let's say, uh, in our paddy field, in our uh, uh, all the commodity uh, uh, agriculture, so we want to make sure that we can get more uh, products uh, and we we can have more output from the farm, so that we we are not depending on importing the uh, food from outside, right? So uh, there are many things, including in healthcare. Nowadays, in healthcare, uh, uh, in 5G, we can. It is possible to have a remote, uh, remote uh, monitoring or remote diagnosis by the healthcare uh, providers, doctors, 
Okay, so there are many interesting applications in 5G, uh, and how how this is possible? Because uh, when we have a very uh, fast, extremely fast data speed, uh, uh, there's no delay, there's no lag between the signal that we transmit and receive. So there are many interesting things that can be done. So I'm not going to go into deep on all these uh, applications. Uh, actually, if you search in the internet, there are many things uh, that you can find very interesting on 5G. Uh, why, why I talk a lot about 5G today? Because uh, I'm talking to a young generation. Now they, uh, you, you are in the secondary school. By the time when you uh, graduate from the university, 5G is already there and in fact, it might be 6G already there. Uh, the, the, the evolution doesn't stop at 5G. Uh, 6G is coming. So what what uh, will be 6G? I'm not going to talk it. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it today because it will take that long. Uh, we didn't have much time for that. So what are the things, uh, the technology that involved in realizing the 5G? Uh, one of it, of course, cyber optics. Technology. This uh, fiber optic technology is uh, the technology that has been used since uh, the generation three. Okay, why we need uh, high speed? Yeah. Definitely, you must uh, 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 fiber optic. And another uh, technology that is very important for fiber is antenna. What kind of antenna that we use is uh, we call it as massive MIMO. Multiple input. MIMO is multiple input, multiple output. So there are many transmitted at the same time because on this antenna, there are many uh, antennas uh, in the same, uh, on the same, there are hundred, more than 100 elements of antennas. So many signals transmitted at the same time. So that's why we can transmit uh, signal very high speed. Okay, another technology is beam forming or beam steering, where the signal is focused to certain users. Okay, I still remember this beam forming when I uh, did my master degree last time, uh, which was 15 years ago. Uh, at that time, I did research uh, uh, on beam forming, and now it's already realized. I mean, uh, how fast uh, the technology is adopted uh, in telecommunication. So when we go back to our topic, what is the job or career uh, that is uh, available in this industry? Since um, when we have 5G, uh, the networks become more complex, okay? And we need more technical engineers to do the planning, to make sure that all the networks are working properly, uh, it meets the requirement and it meets uh, all the needs. And if there's any problem, troubleshoot the problem we need and yes. So definitely the job opportunities are very, very broad uh, and it's expanding. I mean, all the companies in telecommunication industry, most of the companies are expanding. And in fact, in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are the industry that is not affected and in fact needed by uh, the whole world to, to expand, to provide uh, seamless uh, communication uh, uh, everywhere. Right? When we talk about career, uh, there are many job scopes. Uh, you can be telecommunication engineer, radio access network engineer, 5G solution, architect, data center. So um, you can be involved in planning, designing, or managing, or troubleshooting. You can involve in software, uh, hardware planning. Uh, so uh, in the industry, you are not going to only look at the technical part, but also managing. Okay, uh, you have to be a good team. Uh, uh, team members and team leaders, you have to work in team, right? So there are many careers or uh, opportunity or job opportunity in telecommunication engineering. So go back to our focus, women, okay, uh, for ladies, for girls today. 
uh, actually in telecommunication industry, there are many ladies or women involved. So you don't have to be uh, to feel like uh, we we are minority. We, we cannot do what a man can do. Uh, it is already proven uh, that there are many leaders in telecommunication industry are women. This is just an example. Uh, when I Google there, is, uh, we can uh, see a few photos of, of women uh, doing work on on. Uh, telecommunication engineering. Uh, one thing that we must uh, remember, this is uh, one thing that uh, I am uh, I come across when I search on this. Uh, this is actually happening in one of the forums uh, with a few uh, technical leaders, a uh, few leaders in telecommunication industry, women in telecommunication industry. One of the speakers uh, in the internet work platform mentioned that uh, people uh, nowadays we must be, uh, we must bear in mind that telecommunication engineer is not uh, an engineer that needs to uh, climb poles okay or work in uh, and must know a lot of mathematics uh, of course it's, uh, it is the basic but it's not only mathematics and actually climbing poles I don't think that uh, uh, it's actually a climbing force of pulling fibers. They are more towards a technician job. So we as uh, ladies don't be afraid to uh, enroll in telecommunication uh, engineering course because of course you are, you are not asked to climb poles to, to uh, uh, troubleshoot any problem with the antennas. Okay, so it requires EQ, uh, emotional quotient, and a lot of um, Communication skills, uh, managing major managerial skills, uh, yeah, and of course you must be passionate with your work, right? So again, um, I would like to uh, convince you that uh, actually uh, telecommunication engineering is also suitable for women, and uh, if we want to take this course, uh, it is not something that uh, uh, is too difficult for us. So most of the time, it is uh, planning and managing. It is like like uh, at home uh, when you observe your mom. Uh, uh, when you, let's say we want to arrange furniture at our home, uh, we are the planner. Uh, a mother is a planner, and men, uh, uh, a mother will tell the father, okay, where to put the uh, sofa, where to put the. TV. Basically, it's a, a planning, uh, it's a, a planning work, but the the work itself is done or performed by uh, guys. Uh, okay, our father, our brother will uh, arrange all the equipment, not us. So uh, don't worry about uh, about this. <laughs> so so uh, I think uh, with that, uh, I would like to uh, end my presentation. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Siti Azlida. We will take the questions from the chat box in uh, the YouTube comment section. So again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Siti Azlida. Uh, for those who are just with us live on YouTube, STEM for All Makerspace, welcome girls and uh, boys perhaps also. At the moment, we have 133 of you guys uh, who are watching this live and we are bringing you this session live from STEM for All Makerspace in Daman Mall. Together with me is, are the distinguished speakers from IPC Systems and also Multimedia University. So let me just go through the uh, comment box. Um, we have some of you who have been saying good morning, good morning to all of you. Uh, special shout out to Ayuni Chia who just say hello, hello, hello. So um, you guys can put all the shout outs in the uh, live chat. Yes, you will have gotten this link from your teachers. Um, and this is the session where we will share with you the careers in telecommunications. As Dr. Siti Azlida mentioned just now, you can actually see uh, telecommunications as like a highway. 5G is basically creating the highway to be bigger or even multi-tiered. 
When you have the highway bigger, you can have more vehicles on the highway. You can have even bigger vehicles on the highway. That's when you will have game streaming faster. You can even have various video on demand even faster. You can have many more people in your household. My household is forever fighting for the bandwidth. So it's never enough, especially when mom needs to go live like this. That's why I'm here now in the main mall uh, with the super cool setup of uh, STEM for All Makerspace Studio so that I don't have to fight with my kids who are probably doing their PUBG streaming and also class online. So when we have a bigger bandwidth, we run on five generation um, telecommunication infrastructure, we will be able to do all the super cool stuff. And all the super cool stuff, the infrastructure bit, and also the content that runs on it are basically careers that are not necessarily so in the future. I see some of you are saying that you are in your form three. So if you are in your form three, make sure when you go to form four, pick the science stream. Because when you pick the science stream, you will be able to do the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics programs and this will lead you to even more super cool stuff that you can do in telecommunication engineering. Not only telecommunication engineering, but all the technologies associated to it, including streaming content. So now we have with us also Mr. Chi Tan Shah, who is the uh, regional director for the advanced support group in IPC systems. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chi Tan Shah. Good morning. All right. Um, how are you today? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing very well. I'm very glad to attend this forum. And hopefully, I'll be able to help the ladies uh, join the te telecommunication stream. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, now, what boys and girls, or see, I mentioned boys first again. I should say girls and boys. Uh, what Mr. Chitan will share perhaps after this is perhaps the uh, overall view of what IPC systems, by the way, this is sponsored and brought to you by IPC systems in Remember Hut, and also hosted by Multimedia University and organized by STEM for All Makerspace. And we are live from their super cool studio. Uh, STEM for All Makerspace is really cool. Uh, unfortunately, we have all these restrictions on MCO. If not, this place is really the best garage, uh, you know, uh, garage as in where you get to tinker things uh, in Damen Mall, Subang. So perhaps one things uh, a little bit better in terms of uh, the COVID situation. We will have more and more programs here. And um, okay, uh, now Mr. Chitan, uh, perhaps you can share what is it that you do in IPC systems and um, what are the areas perhaps in telecommunications engineering associated to IPC systems that the girls and also boys would be able to uh, be inspired with? Sure. So I'll, I'll give a little bit of brief of what IPC information system does first and then uh, probably touch base on what I do at IPC and then probably answer how the students can excel in the telecom industry, you know, or with, with the, what are the right kind of skill sets. Uh, my apologies. So first and foremost, uh, IPC is a technology and service leader uh, powering the global financial markets. Um, so to put simply, IPC has two divisions or departments within the organization. The first arm is the communications and the compliance arm. And the second arm is, you know, connecting opportunities or the network services arm, as we call it. Um, put simply, what communications and compliance arm does is imagine you had to call a friend of yours in New York from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, what we do, given the mobile technology, now either we will dial uh, the number or we will have him or her as a contact and then we will dial him or her through the speed dial or as, as a content. Um, what IPC does is at an enterprise level and not at a mobile level. So um, what we provide is a solution whereby if you had tens and thousands of such users within an organization that needed to connect with the outside world, uh, needing to make split second decisions, um, 
IPC will provide a solution which will enable the customers to be able to reach these tens of thousands of customers at any given point in time. <coughs> My apologies. 24 cross 7, 365 days a year. Um, and this we enable by providing the backend infrastructure which goes in and providing devices which will enable the end users to do it. Um, so you are able to do this in within a matter of seconds. You wouldn't even know about it. It all takes place in the background, right? Now, that is the communications bit, and I'm not going too technical here so, so that everyone can understand. Yeah, thank As you very much. Thank you. As part of the compliance uh, requirement, most of the financial institutes are required to record the communications that take place. So IPC provides solutions to take care of those so that the financial organizations can provision those to the regulatories uh, within the individual countries across the globe as required um, with those records. Right? Now, in terms of the second division of IPC, which is connecting opportunities, I just mentioned that, you know, imagine you had to call your friend from Kuala Lumpur to New York. Now, imagine if you had this pipe, which is open 24 cross 7, 365 days a year, which is dedicated to you. So you are able to just lift your handset and be able to reach your friend directly in New York. That is a part of what our network services division does. All this backed by a 24 cross 7, 365 days a year, world-class service, which is backed by IBC. And we have a service desk or help desk, which is available 24 cross seven. We have our support divisions, which are available 24 cross seven. So we provide end-to-end -end solutions for our financial customers. So that's basically what IPC does. Um, as far as my role at IPC, I have a dual role. Uh, I am the regional director for Asia Pacific for Advanced Support Group. And I'm also the country manager for Malaysia. So as part of the Advanced Services Group, what me and my team do is imagine, and I'm going to put this in a very simple manner. Um, imagine you had an issue with a software or an application on your mobile device, right? Um, what if with your consent, the provider was able to log into the device remotely and help you resolve the issue, thereby saving time. You don't have to walk up to say Digicel or Maxis or TM and help to resolve the issue. So it saves you time, it saves you money, and it helps you get a quicker resolution. So that's basically what my department does. We provide solutions to customer problems by logging into their systems remotely with their consent. Um, and then as obviously part and parcel of my re job requirement is to ensure the world-class customer service. So customer first is the motto of IPC that IPC runs by, right? Um, as part of my secondary role, which is the country manager of Malaysia, uh, I am tasked with being the senior representative for IPC and overseeing the efficient running of the KL office. So that's my basic role at IPC here in Malaysia. Um, in terms of the skills and what the students would have to do in terms of excelling in the industry, uh, what I would propose is the students should actively participate in the IT related projects, which are organized in the schools. Externally, students should also explore the opportunities by attending discussion groups, you know, forums and or workshops. This would, these exposures basically would not only help the students become more familiar with the STEMs, but would also help develop the skill sets necessary to excel in the industry. Right. Now, other than the technical skills, the, the probably, you know, IPC overall looks at the communication skills, problem solving, 
and the ability to work as a team, you know, together as part of a team. So that's what we would look at or any organization would look at for you to get recruited, right, overall. Um, so that's all from my end. Uh, all right. Hopefully, your questions. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chitan. Uh, for sharing with us basically what IPC systems remember had and also your role as the regional director and um, it's really interesting while we talk about all this and this is so made possible I mean previously uh, the dissemination of content for example live streaming can only be done by huge broadcasters only now we can broadcast anywhere from um, any content and uh, with us at the moment we have 150 uh, who, uh, who are watching live with us and um, thank you very much for staying with us and staying focused. We have some of the students saying, hey guys, stay focused. Yes, please stay focused because at the end of this session, we'll be sharing with you the link to a quiz. And that quiz for the first 40 students who will be submitting will stand a chance to have um, a session or rather participation with a workshop that I'll be conducting from Multimedia University on how do you create cool content or video making and communication. So um, you want to stay tuned and pay attention. On top of that workshop, you will also stand a chance uh, to have some exciting prizes by STEM for All Makerspace and also IPC Systems. So, okay, now we have 150 students and we have, uh, perhaps we can have some of you shout out your school so that I can see what schools do we actually have with us live today. Um, I can see here you have, um, everybody says hi. Okay, we have SMK Taman Petaling. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sarojini is asking, Sekolah Mana? Yeah, we would also like to know Sekolah Mana. So if you guys can shout out your school name. All right. Thank you. We have someone from SMK Raja Mahadi, SMK Bukit Rahman Putra. Super cool. Uh, so now if we have more schools and we know how many schools have more students, uh, we also have SMK Raja Mahadi. SMK P. Uh, SMK P, P stands for? Oh, perempuan. Oh, okay. All right. So, we also have SMKP Taman Petaling. Okay. Uh, we also have someone from SMK Seri Bintang Utara, Bin Bandar Utama Damansara 3. Shout out to all of you. Thank you very much for being with us at 10.39 in the morning. I know it's, it's really early, right? Um, and uh, I think most of you are actually having uh, classes from home still, especially if you are in the Form 1 to Form 4, you still uh, are basically at home. And um, I assume you are here because your teachers gave you the link. And if you have joined us, just, just join us. What this live webinar is about is to share with you telecommunication, specifically telecommunication engineering, and how it is going to affect you in terms of career. You might not see it yet because you are still in the lower form in secondary school, but the... Um, media or the technology that you are consuming are basically running on all telecommunications infrastructure. Uh, you get to do what Dr. Siti Azlida was saying just now, AR, VR, augmented reality, the closest to it is like Pokemon Go. It's basically merging the digital world and your physical world. Playing your streaming PUBG and uh, Mobile Legends is all also made enable because of telecommunications engineering. And once we have 5G in Malaysia, which we are working very hard in getting 5G implemented, uh, not only the government but also all the telcos, 
Of course, I come from Multimedia University, a subsidiary of Telecom Malaysia. We are really pursuing 5G and enabling 5G so that we have super cool content running almost seamlessly, like no more lag, you know. You don't get killed in your mobile legend because you lag and you lag because your mom is also on YouTube. So now we have the third speaker and you will want to pay attention to the third speaker because we will be asking you question after after this is basically a quiz and you will want to be the first 40 people who would be submitting the answers because then you will stand a chance to do the workshop on uh, communication and video making with Multimedia University. So now without further ado, I invite the third speaker we have today which is Miss Nurul Jaizah. Miss Nurul Jaizah is an engineer in IPC Systems in Rambarhat. Good morning, Ms. Nuru Jaiza. Hi, morning. How are you this morning? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, uh, now it's your turn to inspire the girls that engineering is not a boy thing, that uh, even girls can do it, and it is a super cool, not boring program. So now, can we have your um, background a bit, like uh, what is it that you do in IPC system, and what made you choose engineering, um, you know, despite people say engineering is susah, kan? Uh, it's only calculating and, and what calculating? Uh, and at maths, uh, by the way, I'm a pure science student and those who are not yet in pure science because you ha are not yet in form 4, please pick form 4, what pure science, physics, biochemia, at maths. Uh, so that one, if you want to do any other additional uh, accounting, you can do that, but make sure you do pure science because uh, being in the science stream, will open up many, many more opportunities for you. You can't run away from being technical in the future. So, uh, Miss Jaiza, it's your turn now. You know, inspire the girls that this is doable and your experience in uh, being in the engineering field. Okay, uh, as a network engineer, uh, I'm doing a network monitoring troubleshooting and also configuration. I will monitor uh, a network performance using all available system to identify port and outage. For all the new hardware or devices, uh, I need to do a configuration from the scratch. I also need to do a documentation, uh, such as a network diagram, the capacity report, and some other things. This document is very important to assist us in uh, troubleshooting and planning for the network in infrastructure and operation. Uh, in some cases, uh, like a new installation or hardware failure, I also need to be an on-site support where I need to check the equipment physically on the, uh, on, uh, at our data center. And uh, for the second question, uh, what motivated uh, me to decide uh, for, uh, on this career, uh, is because uh, I love uh, the technology and the network itself. It keeps me uh, thinking on what will happen in our technology in the next five or ten years. As you know, the technology industry is changing rapidly uh, and new network solution could significantly improve our infrastructure. I believe this area is very important because we have a uh, network everywhere right now. As we can see during this pandemic, uh, the network is very important for the lecturer, teachers and students to run their online classes. Same for the company uh, where we will only join a virtual meeting like what we are doing right now. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nurul Jaiza. So, uh, at the scale of, uh, say, one to five, five being coolest, what would you rate your coolness of your career? Five being four, paling cool. 4.5? Wow, that's that's really, really cool. I should have asked Dr. Azlida also just now at the rate of 1 to 5, uh, what would be her, uh, you know, cool meter of her career. 4.5 is super cool to have for your career because it's something like doing um, what you love 
and like yeah. you are paid to do your hobby kind of thing. So uh, yeah, that right. that would be uh, very very nice to have. You know, go and venture into something that you have passion about, and uh, do not be deterred or like different because uh, people are saying it's difficult. You know, nothing is easy in life, uh, and the moment you get the hang of it, you will be able to pursue it. So wish now goes to the next question I have for you, Miss uh, Nuruja Iza, which is, uh, what would possibly be the challenges in your career? Okay, uh, the the most challenges is a trust. Uh, as you know, technology uh, nowadays are conquered by a man. Most of the people always uh, underestimate uh, the ability of women in men profession. The struggle started as early as uh, when uh, I went for the interview, not just about knowledge, uh, but I also need to prove that I can do uh, the same as what men can do or even better. Same when I already got hired, the first year is to ensure uh, that they can trust and rely on me, same as other men. So I need to keep on uh, improving proving my skill and knowledge and will not say no in whatever task they give to me. Just keep on trying and I believe in uh, every successful task will make us more reliable and trusted. All right, that's basically to sum it up, go girl power, right? Like girls can also do this, um, you know, it is okay to be doing uh, something that uh, it's male dominated at the moment uh, because that will pose great opportunity. Uh, you know, female are uh, before this turn into a very feminist uh, talk. I better stop this and go back to the live chat, right? Okay, um, we have a question. May I ask a question? Um, as a woman in this field, um, have you faced discrimination for being a female worker? So how did you overcome it? I think Ms. Uh, Azli, uh, Ms. Uh, Nuru Jaiza just now have just shared that perhaps uh, there are some little bit of biasness uh, biasa because it's usually male dominated and how Miss uh, Jaiza was saying just now is to work harder and prove that you can do the same if not better. If you could recall what uh, Mr. Chitan just now was also saying, a lot of these things involve not just the technical know-how. Technical know-how becomes pretty much the basics as how Dr. Siti Azlida shared just now. A lot of the real career stuff will look at uh, problem solving, critical um, thinking, communication, which are basically something girls could do very well if not better than the boys. We are also able to, um, I think, look at various perspectives. We have higher EQ, so it is not really something that we should take as like, you know, the engineering or STEM is only favoring the boys. It's also for the girls. It is also something like um, if you see uh, esports or any other sports also, it is something equally um, made possible or available regardless of your gender. So girls do not take it as in uh, I'm a girl, it's only a boy thing to be doing engineering, especially telecommunication engineering. Because at the bottom of telecommunication engineering is connectivity. And like what uh, Ms. Jaiza was trying to explain just now, she looks at the network and how do you maneuver the things? Uh, it's, it's basically problem solving. It's, it's basically like also um, Dr. Siti Azlida was saying, if you see your mother you know, at home rearranging furniture and trying to uh, put things in place, it's something girls, females also can do, if not better than boys. Okay, so um, one last question for Ms. Nuru uh, Jaiza before uh, we conclude. What would be your three points uh, to the girls out there um, as, uh, you know, um, your motivating or motivation towards them in uh, pursuing STEM in general and also specifically telecommunications? Okay. 
uh, first, uh, you need to be positive uh, in whatever you do to accomplish all your dream and goals. Associate and mingle around with all the positive people where this kind of people will still keep encouraging you even when you fail. And then secondly, don't give up and keep on trying. Just because you fall once doesn't mean you are fall at everything. Keep on trying. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on yourself. Try again. You have a millions of alternatives. You will still have a hopes and chances. Last but not least, be brave. Don't be afraid to step outside your comfort zone. As you can find your life will be sweeter than what you imagine. We will learn more from our mistake. It's very painful way to learn, but without pain, there is no gain. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nuru Jaiza, for that very motivating uh, sentences that, uh, you know, girls out there, you can hold to. Uh, no, going into science stream is not a bed of roses. That's given. But the rewards of being, you know, uh, doing something that's hardcore and at the same time, you get to practice your creativity, innovation, and it's really basically many, many uh, significant women out there as shared by Dr. Siti Azlida just now that are in the STEM uh, careers. So now I think we have come to the end of this um, session where we will share with you the link to quiz and we'll be using Quizit. Uh, we will have the link on the top comment box and we're going to pin it. We will also be showing it now. You will be getting this link. Go to this link and answer the questions. You want to be the first top 40 to stand a chance for a free participation in the um, super cool communication and video making uh, workshop in Multimedia University where I'm going to be your um, coach trainer where we're going to share with you is actually always about the science and art merged into one all together you know so okay so this is it it's called scope and career in the telecommunications that's the URL or the link to this quiz okay you will now you can look at it uh, i think that will just remove it and it's now back to me i think but we're gonna post the link in the comment box i hope it's already there let me just go back to youtube and see yes that's there okay stem for all makerspace have just posted the url to the um see when i say url is actually connectivity is uniform resource locator it basically means the link it basically means specifically where is it it's supposed to go so the packets bits and bytes that all involve is all with us now so it's not that alien when we talk about science technology engineering and mathematics in our daily lives now and girls can do just as well as boys so girls out there 151 of you Please, please, please uh, consider joining um, the sign stream, the pure sign stream when you enter the form four, okay? And do Reka Bentuk Technology, computer science and all the super stuff like that. In the meantime, um, I think we have the link up for about half an hour but it's open for three days yes the organizer is saying that this competition is open up for is open for three days however the prizes will be given to the first 40 correct ones and early submission also so there's two criteria in there uh it's open for girls only or also boys uh, only girls so see now we are being biased for girls uh, this is only for the girls and this is brought to you by ipc systems in denver hard and also stem for all maker space uh, you are also will be standing for uh prizes chances to get prizes on top of the um session or workshop with multimedia university so i think uh we have come to the end of this session thank you very much to all three speakers uh dr siti azlida from the uh, faculty of engineering in multimedia university mr chitan shah and also miss nurul jaiza uh, from ipc systems in Dian berhad and the teachers and students of um, the various various school who are with us live 
uh, yeah, that's, that's one question that I ask. Can I answer the quiz now? Yes, you definitely can answer now because we are also not looking for correct answers, but those who can answer quickly because the top 40 first submissions with correct answer will be the ones who will be doing the or be participating uh, with the um, workshops that I'll be conducting on creating content which is communication based and also video making. All right. It's not very usual that we give out this for free. We do bits and pieces for free. And this is leading to Mingu Science Negara also. And STEM for All Makerspace is a great collaborator of Multimedia University. And uh, we are proud to be part of this um, program. So, okay, to all those who are still with us, thank you very much. Uh, okay, there's also a question before I go, how I you can't get it go to the top part where stem for all makerspace has given the link and pin the link so you can click on the link it's basically a google form then it will bring you to the page for you to answer the questions all right the the answers are basically in this video so you know you can after the live has ended you can replay it and look for the answers so thank you very much everyone who have been live with us thank you very much also to the speakers this is the scope and career in telecommunication inspire female students in pursuing careers in the stem brought to you by stem for all makerspace ipc system syndrome berhad and multimedia university i am natalia shamswa signing off thank you